What's up, team? Thank you so much for tuning in to another interview with Team Delta's Athlete of the Month. For those of you who don't know, Team Delta is comprised of the runners who are going through my running program, Delta Performance. And our Athlete of the Month is nominated by the entire team and highlighted throughout the month. And this month's nomination went to none other than John Reyes, which is super exciting because John has been on the team for over a year now, and he was our very first male teammate that we've ever had. Longest standing male, John. Really exciting. <laughs> um, when John first started, he had shin splints, had been getting them for a while. Um, I do believe that he says he hated running when he first started. Um, we'll dive deeper into that <laughs> in a little bit. Um, but since joining, he's been able to completely get rid of his shin splints. And also, I do believe he'll tell you that he has developed a maybe a small love for running now. Um, and I couldn't be more proud of him and his work ethic and his dedication and commitment to his goals. So I'm super excited to interview this badass athlete john today and it obviously shows that he is amazing because he's been nominated by his teammates to be our august athlete of the month so john thanks for being here yeah glad to be here yeah yeah well um thanks so much um i hope that you're uh, just as excited as i am about this conversation um i was very, very pumped when I saw your name pop up on the nominations um, and seeing all the things that uh, our teammates were saying about you. It just made me super happy. And I'm excited to have this opportunity to just dive a little deeper into what makes you tick as an athlete. That was pretty. That was <laughs> How pretty does it feel? When I heard the announcement, I was like, yeah. what? Me? No way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, John, you've made an impact. You're obviously doing something right and inspiring a bunch of our, uh, a bunch of our teammates to just be better. So, yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about, tell us a little bit about you, first off, before we really get into the running and stuff, I want to know, look just a little bit more about John and who you are outside of running. Y'all might know, but uh, yeah, I'm from Houston. Uh, I'm not from Austin, clearly. I don't think a lot of people in Austin are from Austin. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Not very many, no. <laughs> yeah. I moved here at 17 to go to UT, learned Portuguese there and anthropology and uh, kind of stayed in Austin ever since. Nice. I yeah, don't work at all with those things. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's still really cool. Um, those are really cool skills, so... <laughs> What um what are you doing? What do you do now in Austin, John? Uh, I work. Run? Oh man. Uh, I mean, other than work, uh, and uh, I'm outside a lot. I really just like being outside. Yeah, yeah. COVID's really gotten me out, outside swimming, hiking, you name it. Yeah. So, I know you um a little bit from my camp gladiator days, um, but not the whole team doesn't know about you and your past fitness experiences. So tell us a little bit about your fitness journey up until Delta. Like what were you doing before? What, talk to us about it. Oh man, uh, I used to be really into biking. And I think that was a consequence of living on the east side. That's how I would get to school. Yeah, uh, yeah like really, really biker bro. Like, take you know bike everywhere you know uh, that was a lot of what i was doing um then i moved uh, it sort of fell off of that and i was also doing uh, like some circuit training but like with a friend but you know moved away and then for a, a large while i, I really wasn't uh, doing much of anything uh yeah it was around 2016 yeah um Mutual acquaintance of ours, Ben, uh, actually. Oh yeah. Got me, uh, roped me in with the uh, September deal for CG. Mm -hmm. Got started there. Um, stuck around for a year and a half, and then moved on over to. I got on site to work at Apple, and there's a gym there, so I kind of moved to moving working there, and then 
you know, the uh, this past year happened. So mm-hmm. I've been at home yeah. and uh, Delta presented itself as a really great opportunity to uh, keep that same level of uh, intense training going. Nice. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So is that is um, what would you say that leads into my next question? Is that kind of what got you into doing Delta was just the pandemic or were you, you know, I know that you mentioned to me a couple of times that you used to not like running at all. Was there any desire to want to be better at that or talk to what, what was going on when you started? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I definitely wanted to get better at running. I was never really that great, even getting into being a regular, like, you know, you know three, four times a week at CG. Uh, the running part was always just kind of painful. Um, I get all kinds of different injuries and aches and I really couldn't pin down why. Uh, so that was something I really wanted to, to address. Uh, it was just like a really great opportunity to, to figure that out here with Delta. Oh, especially well, sprints. Would you... <laughs> yeah, sprints will get you. They hurt like yeah. all over. I personally think that sprints hurt in the best way, but I can understand why a lot of people don't find that the case. (laughs) Okay. So when would you say that you decided that you actually kind of enjoyed running? It's a great question. Uh, Definitely (laughs) when it got colder uh, that first year, uh, I started really hitting the, like the, the shin splint exercises, like foam rolling. And I started recovering yeah. faster. I think that's when I started enjoying it. It wasn't like, okay, I'm going to try really hard, you know, to, to finish this workout uh, at the cost of me kind of just grumbling and complaining about, you know, this pain for mm-hmm. like four days. The recovery cycle got a lot faster. And that's when I was like, okay, I can do this. This is actually enjoyable. It's short, you know, I can do other yeah. stuff and come back to this that same week. Yeah. Oh, good. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, well, you know, I'm always preaching recovery is so big and, and if you need to cut down your workouts and stuff like, yeah, do it. I think, I think that a lot of times we get so caught up and I, I'm, I do this as well, but I think we get so caught up sometimes on just like checking all the boxes on the workout and like making sure that we get everything done in the workout. And, Oh, coach said to do this many reps. Like I can't, the workout's not over if I didn't do that. Um, and that's, not it's so not true we need to have a just as a whole in society with working out i think we need to have a better mindset of 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 doing what you can so that you can come back the next day and do it again um i love that you i love that you came to that you know on your own that's great that's great I want to know a little bit more about your goals i know that you and i have talked about your goals a little bit um but the team doesn't know enough about, about what you're working towards. So talk to me a little bit about where you started and what you've been working towards for the last year, almost year and a half at this point. I would probably put it down to two things. The first being stop having pain from running, which I think has been achieved. I don't yeah, think I've gotten good. shin splints since like maybe at least the spring maybe, or even like the beginning of the year around like late winter. Um, yeah. It's just been really great to not have that. Um, yeah. And the, the other goal was really, the way I kind of angled that one was I always struggle with doing the time mile, which mm-hmm. is just 12 minutes. Uh, and, you know, I improved the time, but even then just the one mile just really kicked my butt. Um, yeah. And so I wanted to get to, a 10 minute mile across several miles, right? Not just one, like, yeah. Uh, and, and I've definitely been working and getting closer and closer to that. I think just this week, that was maybe about 15 seconds. Oh. Uh, and that's like a non, like, you know, no stopping kind of run, yeah. which is just amazing. Yeah, that is huge to go from running, you know, 12 minutes and, and you shared your your watch times with me several times, but, you know, watching you progress from going 12, I mean, even I remember in the beginning, even sometimes your, your watches, you know, your watch mileage would say like 13, 14, sometimes 15 minute miles when we were going out there running to now 
I think the last like three times you've showed me your, um, you know, your watch and, and your progress, it's been consistently in the tens and that's, that's huge. Like, yeah. I hope that you know, and like pat yourself on the back every single day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I do. It's like just a big improvement. Uh, and that's, and that's in this heat. Uh, I, I definitely notice like on those cool, like those random cool days where we get the eighties, it's like, I, I can definitely get a push a little more. Uh, yeah. So I'm pretty excited for the fall. Oh, it's coming. I'm also excited for the fall. I'm <laughs> going to be a hot one on the track today, John. It's going to be hot. Yeah. But we're going to get, we're going to get through it though. Just like we always do. <laughs> so how do you, that, I mean, that's a huge improvement over and, and in all honesty, a year doing consistent training is really not a long time. Like it's really not. So for you to, in such a short amount of time, be able to improve your time from, you know, consistently 12, 13, sometimes 14 minute miles and walking and things like that. to now you're running able to run the entire time and we're clocking these closer to 10 minute miles. That's a huge improvement. How do you stay motivated and committed to getting there? I think the approach that I look at and I'm always really looking back at like, what can I do better with my form? Uh, not just like speed, right? I think the speed comes once you start really evaluating your form. Um, and I'm just, I, I try to connect like what, what we do on the strength days, on the strength weeks. And it's like, okay, Sonia really wants us to work on like hip flexors. It's got to be, be a reason for that. I got to use those, you know? Uh, and I remember <laughs> yeah. at the beginning, I really wasn't. I was just kind of dragging my feet, kind of kicking yeah. back and stuff. And and yeah, just addressing that feels better. First of all, I don't get tired as often. Uh, and I'm actually faster, even though it feels slower. It's weird, but uh, but yeah, that's what I always have in mind. Like I'm always trying to think of like, how can I uh, improve what I'm doing? Yeah, and that's I love what kind that. of motivates me. Yeah, I think that's so important is is just thinking about how we can make small, this is why I always ask you guys about your small wins. Cause if we add up a bunch of small wins over a year, that turns into one massive win um, over time. So I think that's, that's huge to, I think that's a great motivator. You know, people, we get caught up in, you know, not seeing progress every time we step on the scale or going out for every single run and being like, Oh, my time hasn't really changed. But um, if we can find these other little things to focus on that aren't even necessarily, I mean, yes, what you're on your form is related to your goal, but it's not, you're not looking at your time every day and questioning it. Yeah. You know, you're saying, okay, well, we're just going to put that on the side for a little bit and focus on these other things that will help me down the road. I think that's, I love that. I think that's huge. Um, and I hope that anybody listening to this will uh, be able to hopefully relate a little bit and be able to take that into their into their lives yeah yeah i also wanted to add that even stepping away from running is good um yeah. for me at least uh, like i've definitely i think you hit me with a bug when we did that barton springs day oh, and, good. Uh, i've been swimming and there's you know there's a lot of overlap with the same like yeah. uh biomechanics and so i'll just enjoy swimming and i may use do that or running and then i'll come back do a run and I'll find that, you know, I'll, I'll run better uh, just from having like still working, using the same moves, but you know, just yeah. not on the road. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Cause not only, not only are you giving your body a little bit of a break swimming is so, I mean, swimming is so good for runners. It really is. You're working on cardio. It's hard. It's a full body cardio. It's different than biking, you know, biking, it's biking. You're mostly using your legs and, and your core a little bit, but there's not much that compares to running as far as a full body workout goes, but swimming is one of those things where you're literally working everything at the same time, trying to breathe heavy and move fast. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's huge. It's, it's funny that you mentioned that because Stephanie uh, in her interview, she mentioned kind of the same thing was, was having these other outlets to get your mind off of running all the time. Um, and I think that's huge. It's just like anything else we do. If you're, if you're, even in your job, you know, if you're focused, laser focused on this one little project all the time and you don't have anything to get your mind off of it or to do other things, you're not going to find joy in that. 
um, it becomes daunting after a while. So I love that. Yeah. I'm so glad that you're going to Barton Springs and swimming. <laughs> <laughs> So John, you are a coffee connoisseur. And me and the team want to know what, what is it about coffee? Like what, how did this get started? Talk to me. Um, it's kind of like a family tradition. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's how I uh, bonded with like my mother and my grandmother uh, was coffee. Like, I don't know, Salvador or Houston or here, you know. Uh, I just, yeah, truly really learned to really love coffee. And I just wanted to make it myself too. And it's so rewarding. Uh, I'm like a big believer in buying whole bean and grinding and brewing it yourself. I was telling Patricia this whole spiel during the last uh, track day. <laughs> I love that. Patricia is actually the one who was like, you have to ask John about his coffee. Ah, oh, that is so awesome. I love that so much. So do you drink coffee like before you run? Is it, do you use it as like a pre-run fuel or after, or is this more like, this is my relaxing, get my mind right for the day type of thing? Yeah, definitely the latter. I've tried it before running. Uh, I've just been trying to figure out like the best time to do it before. I was like, do I want to like slam <laughs> a hot beverage before going to the track? <laughs> I don't know, but maybe, maybe I should consider cold brew though. Cold brew, there you go. I, uh, if I'm working out in the morning, I have to have a little caffeine. I will not, I, well, I think this is, you know, I'm not a morning workout person. I think everybody yeah. knows that. I can't. And the few times that I have had to work out in the morning and then didn't have coffee, I'm like, I don't even, I hate this workout. I hate being here. Get me out of here. <laughs> Yeah, you'll never see me at your 5 a.m. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, if I wasn't leading it, you wouldn't see me there either. <laughs> That's funny. Well, good. You should totally just don't, don't, don't even worry about trying the coffee. If that's your like Zen time in the morning to connect with yourself and stuff, don't, don't, don't change that. <laughs> don't, don't bring running into that. Keep that, keep that outside. Keep that outside. Fair enough. All right, John. So I have one last question for you. And this one's kind of a big one. I need to know how has running changed your life? Oh, that's pretty deep. <laughs> uh, no, it's gotten me to enjoy my neighborhood a lot more. Um, I've been here. I've been here in Brentwood for about seven years. Definitely got an appreciation for just all the people, all the dogs, all the pets, birds, owls, you know, I'm either out like in the afternoon or like late at night. And it's just really grown to liking where I'm at here. And on top of that, like the convenience comes to me. Like we got track days. That's how I walk, you know, it's like, yeah, it's a walk. It's a walk for me. So unless it's pouring rain, I, you know, you'll catch me walking over there. Uh, it's just so nice here. Yeah. Yeah, you do live in a in a really great area. Um, I love the Brentwood neighborhood. It's there's so much culture. You can see it in the houses and the way that people decorate their front yards. There's that one yard in your neighborhood that there's always like the big painted chair and they put all the yeah, um, yeah. stuff in the front yard. I purposefully try to drive down that street every season because I know they're gonna have something else in their front yard. I love that. It's amazing how running can bring us so much joy outside of just, you know, it's not always about like getting a better time, anything like that. Sometimes it is really just about slowing down and, and taking note of the world around you. Yeah. I, like uh, a really cool thing was, I think, early in the pandemic, up Arroyo Seco, like maybe before getting to around where that house was. This house just had a couple guys that were playing like a banjo and like a fiddle and like a guitar, I think. And they would just play music in the afternoon because all the kids were, were home, right? So we would just see like these like uh, makeshift concerts of like just spaced out people. Yeah, that was going on for months. Uh, that was really cool. Ah, oh, that is so cool. Oh my gosh. I need to come run in your neighborhood. 
That is so great. John, I love getting to know you more over this past year, getting to know you a little bit better. Like, I just love your spirit. It's such a nice, calm, like, I just feel very comfortable around you. And I think that that's important to have people like that in your life. So in other words, thank you for coming into my life. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> glad to be a part of this group. Oh, well, we're glad to have you, John. Well, one last thing before you go, do you have any words, inspiration, words of encouragement, anything that you would like to say to anybody out there who maybe hasn't ever tried running or doesn't like running because they're in pain, it's hard, anything like that? What would you say to anybody in a similar situation as you when you started? I mean, it goes without saying. If it's something you want to do, like don't give up. Definitely seek out an expert that can give you, you know, the time to, to really look and is invested in in your improvement. Because yeah, that was a big change in how I looked at running. I love that. Thank yeah. you. Caring. Yeah. Well, John, this has been this has been great. I hope that you have enjoyed our short little uh, interview together. I'm excited for the team to hear the recording. Like I said, yeah, I was too. really, really excited to see that you'd been nominated by everyone. <laughs> thanks for taking some time to chat with me. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, thanks. Uh, really, it's, it's an honor and yeah, glad to do this interview. So thanks y'all. Team interviewing John was so much fun. I hope everyone has enjoyed getting to know him a little bit better this month, just as much as me. This is Coach Sonia with Delta Performance. Thanks again for listening to me.